Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thanks, Jake, for providing that background on how NPN is um, approaching this idea of phenology um, forecasts. And I'm really excited to, to present to you sort of how we um, collaborate with different partners, with scientists, and with data and users to make these products better. Um, there seems to be a lot of interest in this group, and so hopefully we have something to offer as well as something to learn from you all. Um, so I'm going to talk about how we collaborate to develop these actionable technology forecast products. Um, and there, as we've all heard, there's a lot of discussion about how do you make a decision ready forecast, and that it's really important to have stakeholders at the table. Um, and so, you know, there's a really great suite of established best practices to how to make products just in general and how to do collaboration that increases the chance that your forecast is going to be used. Um, these include collaboration, engagement, commitment, buy-in, and communication. And I, um, and I put the reference here for the Enquist et al. paper from 2017. There was a special issue in the Frontiers in Ecology and Evolution about translational ecology that really laid the groundwork for providing a framework um, for how to do this kind of work and also how to evaluate this kind of work. Um, here at the NPN, we think about different modes of stakeholder engagement. So there's contractual, where we have a unidirectional flow of information. We make a product for a problem that maybe we don't interact as much with our stakeholders. We consult with our stakeholders, uh, researchers consult with the stakeholders to diagnose problems and find a solution. There's the collaborative mode where stakeholders and researchers are equal partners at the table, and the collegial mode where researchers are actively encouraged um, to do their own, to take on their own development and capacity at the end of a project. Um, and so I'm going to just highlight for you two examples of those 12 insect peanut you know, forecasts that Jake told you about, um, where we've really collaborated with researchers to improve our forecasts or to develop a workflow that helps make um, models more decision ready. So this is work we did for the U.S. Forest Service. This is Dr. Talbot Trotter, who developed a really great um, agent-based model for Asian longhorn beetle that had many stages. Each stage had a different um, thresholds and start dates. And so we worked with him to develop a model that was a really great approximation of just one stage of this model, emerging adults. When's the earliest time that emerging adults are going to be seen? And this was a really important stage for managers to know about because they don't want to um, cut down trees when adults are emerging because it facilitates their dispersal. Another great example is hemlock woolly adelgid. There's not currently a great phenological model for hemlock woolly adelgid, and so we've been working with folks at Cornell who have a hemlock woolly adelgid phenology project. This is Mark Whitmore. Samita Lumba and Nick Deacher, um, and they are working with us to develop a data collection campaign through our citizen science program, Nature's Notebook. And rather than telling people exactly when the phases are going to occur on our you know, forecast maps, we tell people um, a broad range of when we should be out looking for eggs and nymphs, and so that their data coming in can help create and validate um, the, the in progress model development. We've really incorporated a lot of stakeholder feedback to improve our models. This is what our maps look like in 2018. This is what our maps look like now. This is for Emerald Ash Borer. We've, as you can see, we've increased the number of categories based on feedback we've received to show more of the um, progression of, of, um, of the stages and the emergence of Emerald Ash Borer. We've also switched our categories. It's hard to see here, but we went from more of a um, categorizing the treatment windows to more of an approach where we just tell people what the um, life stages of the insects are and let them make their own decisions about um, how and when they're going to treat the pets. So to um, really quickly summarize sort of where NPN stands in terms of this field of forecasting, generally we're not um, creating a lot of models ourselves, but we're, we're doing is operationalizing existing models. Um, to create regional and continental scale maps. And so working with us is an opportunity perhaps to take your models if you're working in this field or you're interested in modeling species activity um, and create some of these broader scale products, as well as getting models in the hands of stakeholders via user-friendly tools like our visualization tool and notification services. 
And we're in a position to facilitate collaboration between researchers and decision makers. And so we really were a boundary organization. We see ourselves um, as having connections across a lot of different realms. And so if you're looking for um, stakeholders or you want to do this kind of work, then you know, please do speak to us. Um, we also have this added capacity and benefit of providing real-time delivery of models and maps that are integrated with incoming observations that can be used for validation and improvement. So you can work with us to do a data collection campaign um, that's really informed by the needs of data users. So on behalf of Jake and myself, I just want to thank you. Um, this is a diagram showing our sort of um, where we sit as the boundary organization, where we interact with citizen scientists, educators, tribes, um, decision makers, agencies. So that all. I'll, I'll end that and join. Thank you.